Gorilla Physics. Yeah. So here at Hetnischewi Verken Power Station today, it's a geothermal power station. Um, we're in Iceland, obviously. Just show you the type of day it is. Wet and windy day. There's a real smell of like sulphur in the air because of the sulphur that, that gets dissolved into the water just, uh, when they pump it down under the ground. So obviously geothermal is a renewable source of energy which means that it, it will come back as quickly as we can use it. So it's not like coal or oil or gas where, which once they're gone, they're gone or won't be back for millions of years. Geothermal is renewable and Iceland are kind of leading the way. Since they got the technology they have used uh, the geothermal almost exclusively for their power. This power station produces 300 megawatts of power so it's a pretty decent size of thing. I might try and come back out here to actually try and show you the volcano once we've got less of a cloud that we're in here. So the chap just said they've been making the power here since 2000 and they've been doing hot water since I think 2008 for the greater Reykjavik area. Ever since 1930, Iceland has been using geothermal energy to heat buildings, heat spaces. And one space they heat, the first space they heated was a primary school in 1930. And in 1972, 97% of Icelandic houses, Icelandic buildings were using hot water to, uh, from the geothermal energy. You might just be able to see Mount Hengel now just poking out from the clouds. That's the volcano. There's a huge magma chamber inside there. And that magma chamber is like the boiler of the power station. Uh, the boreholes from here go three kilometers down. Just one of the drill heads used to make these boreholes. It's a really simple schematic diagram of how the power station works. They're just basically pumping down cold water and receiving back hot water. Those arrows show the convection currents in, beneath the Earth's crust. And at three kilometers, at three kilometres, we're going to be looking at about 300, um, 240, they said, to 300 degrees Celsius. So that obviously will boil the water, will return back as steam and can power those gigantic turbines and make the generator spin to produce the power. It's the turbine hall here, so it looks to me like there's um, one, two and then three over the back there turbines. Uh, they'll have three because they'll need to do regular maintenance on them. So it's not making a lot of noise. I'm guessing one of them maybe is on right now. So this is what you're looking at through in the turbine hall. The uh, cone-shaped area, as I said, is the turbine, which is this set of fans, which are driven by the steam. Uh, in turn, they drive or they spin a generator, which is a magnet turning inside a coil of wire. If you look at that cone-shaped area there, that's the, um, that's the turbine inside there. And this goes through into the generators, which are this side here. Remember I said the generator is just a, tur is just a magnet spinning inside a coil of wire. This means that Iceland, in Iceland, electricity is pretty cheap, so they don't tend to have gas boiler systems, they don't tend to have um, gas cookers, most things that we would use gas for they'll be using electricity for. It's very important to look after this landscape if it's going to com continue producing power for you for generations. This is the power station here and the lines running up to the actual area where the boreholes are. And they're very very careful about uh, making sure that it's done in a sustainable way so things they do here will affect what people can do in the future. So renewability doesn't just mean free or, uh, well, hey, let's go, let's have a party and use all the energy we can. It still needs to be done in a responsible manner. Icelanders are very interested, though, in sending their technology and sending their expertise around the world. So there are lots more places in the world, especially developing countries, that can make much better use of the geothermal energy that is available to them. It just takes a capital to set up. And then once you've done that, the energy is free. It still needs a lot of maintenance and a lot of work to make sure that it's a viable option to um, provide energy for that whole country though. So don't think 
when you're writing about things that invite that renewable means no disadvantages because it does have disadvantages um, it just has some very very key uh, advantages it doesn't produce any um, greenhouse gases it doesn't contribute to global warming or climate change so that's really all there is to power stations at GCSE remember there's got to be something to heat the water to make the steam that's going to drive a turbine which drives a generator to make your electricity I hope this works. I'm going to get on the bus pretty sharpish because, yep, there's the hail. Thanks for watching this video from Gorilla Physics. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, why not go ahead and subscribe? I hope you found it useful, so please tell your friends, and every like and share that we get helps us be more useful to more people. And why there's a uh, samurai suit here? Well, I guess that would be Mitsubishi, wouldn't it? Who made the um, turbines for this power plant. More gifts from Mitsubishi. As a means of generating